Good morning, Calvary Chapel family. I just wanted to get together with you this morning and uh, just say, love you guys, miss you, and boy, uh, it's going to be a celebration when we can finally all get back together. Hey, let's start out with a word of prayer, okay? Lord, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our heart. We can be thankful even in some tough times, and these are tough times for us right now, Lord, but we are so thankful that you are sitting on the throne, that you are sitting on the throne of our heart as well, because you're our King, you're our Lord, you're our Savior. And Lord, we look forward to not only for us as a church to be reunited, but we look forward that time to when we can be reunited with you forever. So bless us as we spend these next few moments together pondering over some of the things that you've said and some of the things that we're going through. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, I know that many of you are a little bit edgy right now and going through this difficult time that we all have. And so let me start out by reminding you of something that Jesus said. It's found in the Gospel of John. It's in the 14th chapter, the 27th verse. And here are his words. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Now as the world gives, do I give you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now did you get that? I want to make sure that you understand and hear something that's specifically important in this verse, in this promise that Jesus gave. He said he's given you, past tense now, he has already given you his peace. Remember, my peace I give to you, like any gift, like the gift of salvation. In order to benefit from that, you must receive that. So you have to receive that peace that Jesus has given to you. Now, the world and the situation, circumstances, or whatever it might be, is probably trying to rip that peace out from underneath you. But you can receive it from him. Simply pray, Lord, I want your peace to settle my heart and my mind right now. Help me to receive it at this very moment and to replace this unsettling feeling that I have with that peace that you have given me. Don't forget, keep seeking that because it's already been given to you and all you have to do is receive it for yourself. We have several people in our church that are going through this all alone. And so we need to keep our church family in prayer as well. We've got some that are widows and some widowers and other people that are single for whatever reason that it might be. And they don't have someone to lift them up when they're down or vice versa that, that we might be able to have in a family unit to where one or two or more individuals can help out the one that seems to be lagging at the moment emotionally and spiritually. And so make sure that you reach out. You know who they are. Give them a call. Shoot them a text. Do anything. Write a note. Susie and I have received some really sweet notes that have come from our church family. And it's so uplifting and encouraging. Things down here at the church are pretty hectic. Really. I mean, we're still trying to struggle to make sure that we get everything done and, and uh, take care of the students that are over there at the academy. Actually, it's now converted to daycare. We've got employees that are over there, and we're having to follow all kinds of rules and regulations to keep everyone here safe. And so it's a tough time. We've got to pay the bills, and we've got to go to the bank, and we've got to do a lot of things that, well... Uh, we're supposed to be non-essential business? I don't think so. It's, it's pretty essential in my estimation. At any rate, we've got folks in our church that are facing some real problems, some real health issues. They're getting some news that they need to come down and, and have some things looked at physically um, very quickly. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine, another Calvary Chapel pastor. Actually, Earl is the pastor up in Idlewild. And he's facing some health issues and can't even go up to where his church is and has someone else teaching for him at the time. And so we're constantly trying to keep in contact and lift other people up. And so I want you to know, although you're going through a tough time right now, there are people who might be going through a little bit more difficult time. 
And so reach out to one another. We also have folks in our church that are, are facing <clears throat> real issues financially. These are troubling times. I totally get that. It was in January 21st when the first case of COVID-19 in the United States was confirmed. And you remember what happened after that time? Well, we got off to a slow and quite a rocky start. But just a little bit after that, we were being told that, well, you know what? In a couple weeks, this is all gonna be over. Well, how many times has that been revised? A couple weeks, another week, and a couple more. And this morning's news is saying that if we'll just hunker down and we'll, we can get through this in several weeks ahead, that that curve's gonna start to go back down. Yeah, I understand. It's pretty unsettling. And you're unnerved right now. But don't forget the promise of Jesus. His peace, not just any old kind of peace, like the peace you have when you finally make that final payment on your car. It's not that kind of peace. It's a greater peace. Paul described it as peace that surpasses all understanding. It's able to guard your heart and your mind. Well, these are trying times. But the thing that makes my teeth itch the most is how easy it has been for the government to hurt us like cattle. As most of you know, I've been trying to get Riverside County officials to let those churches that can do a drive-in church, like almost all the nation in all the counties. I can't confirm Los Angeles County, but I can confirm every other county that touches our borders and even Kern County. They're all allowed to do the drive-in church, but not so here. Stay at home, that's what they say. This is a portion of the response that I received from asking for a revision from our county to allow us to do that drive-in church. Quote, this order does not stop you or anyone from conducting streaming religious services through Zoom, Skype, Google, or other techno technological means. Physical services increase the likelihood of people getting out of their cars, passing materials back and forth and driving to other places. In other words, they don't trust you to stay in your car as would be required. They don't trust you to obey the rules and regulations. Stay at home, stay. The only thing that is missing to keep us where they want us to be it's a chip so that they can monitor our actions. I'm serious. There's more going on than a viral infection to combat. And that's a tough battle for all of us here at home and abroad. But remember, there is a spiritual battle that's going on. And you have been drawn right into it. Former UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown has urged world leaders to create a temporary form of global government to take the twin uh, medical, excuse me, to tackle the twin medical and economical crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The former labor prime minister, who was at the center of the international efforts to tackle the impact of the near meltdown of the banks in the year 2008, said that there was a need for a task force involving world leaders, health experts, and the heads of the international organization that would have powers, executive powers, to coordinate a response. A virtual meeting of the G20 group developed uh, in developing countries chaired by Saudi Arabia <clears throat> would be held on Thursday. That's a couple weeks back. But Brown said it would have been preferable to have also include the UN Security Council. Can you say last days? Oh my gosh. Well, I don't want to give in to fear, and I don't want you to either. At the same time, I don't want you to be ignorant. That reminds me of what Paul was 
saying when he was disclosing some of the difficulties that he had been facing. Here's what it reads in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our troubles, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, and so that we despaired even of life. As long as the government is promising businesses money, and everyone is supposed to get at least $1,000 or more, well, people are pretty complacent. I mean, they're just kind of going along with the program. People are a lot more congenial about just being herded around as they have been. Where will the government get all that money? They'll have to print it. So what's that going to do to the inflation in the ensuing months and years? It'll skyrocket. As I said Sunday, the government doesn't see the church as essential business, but they will have to face just how essential that we've been when we're all called out of here. Here's how Paul put it. He says in Thessalonians, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. You're only going through a preview, a preview of what's coming ahead. However, you know some people that just might, if they don't turn to the Lord, go through the real thing. And what will that be? Well, let me give it to you straight from the book of Revelation. In chapter 6, beginning in verse 8, excuse me, verse 1, it says, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And so I looked, and behold, a white horse who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come see. Another horse fiery red went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that the people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the living the third living creature say, Come and see. And so I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it, had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and wine. <laughs> That's worse than a shortage of toilet paper on the shelves. When he opened the four seal, I heard a voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed with him. And power was given him over a fourth of the earth to kill with a sword and hunger and death and by the beasts of the earth. Here's what you do. Follow the guidelines to keep safe, to keep healthy. Follow the rules and regulations. But don't let your mind be herded around like cattle. Be vigilant, because you're in a spiritual battle as well as the viral one that's going around you. Pray. Pray. Pray for family. Pray for friends especially those that do not believe in Jesus Christ or trust in him for their salvation. They too are going through a difficult time 
And you might be able to be quite effective in ministering to them at this moment. So share, share, share. Contact them, pray for them, and pray with them over the phone or a text. Send them the videos that your church is making on a daily basis and on the Sunday and Wednesday night messages. They just might be looking for answers, and we know that there's only one true answer for difficult times. There's only one true answer for life, and that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We're coming upon what the world calls Easter. Let me rename it for us today, Resurrection Sunday. Easter's been canceled. You're not gonna be able to go out and have a community Easter egg hunt, but even though the church is gonna be empty, so is the tomb. Jesus has risen, and no amount of closures on churches that are non-essential, according to the government, can change that fact. Make sure that you're in tune, not only with the news that's going on that's so depressing, but with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit, in the Word of God. Turn on your praise music and worship Him throughout the day. May the Lord bless you and grant you the peace that He has given you. And I ask you to receive that right now. Hey, let's close in prayer, shall we? Lord, we thank you for the time that we could spend together. Not everything that we're talking about is easy to hear, easy to digest, but Lord, it's truth. And so we just ask, Lord, that you would equip us with the truth because that's where the freedom is going to come from. We may not be free to be able to come and go as we would like right now because of the virus that's out there, but we can be free in heart and spirit and mind. We can be free of the clutter of bitterness or the confusion that's out there or the fear. We can be set free from all those things. And someday we'll be set free from the nature of sin and be in your presence forever. We look forward to that. But Lord, in between now and then, may we constantly, constantly remember that life is also a spiritual battle. And you have commissioned us all to go into the world and represent you. You have given us the blessed opportunity to be ambassadors for your kingdom. And what a great opportunity it is for us today. If we know what's happening all around about us, then we can speak that truth to our family and friends and neighbors. Bless us, Lord, with your spirit and the heart to go out and be a witness for you, even if by going out, it's just simply using the technology that's in our hands. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone says, amen. Hey, I do miss you. Looking forward to that time to where we can get together again. God bless. Bye.